Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Thank you again for joining in. Uh, we are slowly moving towards tune day for the S3. So with that, there's a few more parts we need to install. I need to do uh, something with maintenance as well. But today we're going to be covering installing a boost tap on your intake manifold for your Golf GTI, your Golf R, or your Audi A3 or S3. So we're going to get into the installation guys, so stay tuned and we're going to hop right into it. Alright guys, so here is a box from Precision Raceworks. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we have a few things that we need to install before we get tuned, but today we're just going to cover the boost tap and the sensor kit from ATV Motorsports. So let's take those out. Now let's just put this to the side. Alright, so let's cover the boost tap first. So I opened this up earlier, but uh, just to show you guys the boost tap uh, from Precision Raceworks, this is uh, what it looks like. It has uh, three inputs here for uh, vacuum sources, and it has the main one here for a five bar uh, map sensor, which is what we need. Uh, so there it is in the classic Precision Racework blue. And we got, we've got some, got three of these which are just you know the vacuum nipples to connect to it and we have um, which looks to be a locking clip on here okay so we'll put this to the side let's cover the sensor kit so the sensor kit here is the wiring loom which makes life a ton easier these are just plug-and-play you know no soldering no putting wires together Plug and play is what we need. And here we've got the AEM five bar map sensor. Uh, why you would want this guys, it will allow your ECU or basically your tuner in the end of the day to read a higher boost levels than the stock sensor can read, which I believe the peak is currently on the stock sensor. This is, I think it's 29 PSI. Um, this will allow you to definitely get more boost and read it and tune for that. Now there is a secondary sensor which I opted for which is the 4 bar map sensor. Now this goes on the bottom of the car near the charge pipe. Um, a lot of the times there are people who just go with 4 bars for both intake manifold and the charge pipe. Which works however there are a little bit of drivability issues with just the 4 bar map sensors. Um, I believe they can't read too well into vacuum which causes those drivability issues. So if you can guys and if your budget allows definitely go for it, the 5 bar and 4 bar combo. To add one thing that you will do need that unfortunately does not come with the kit is you will need something to puncture your intake manifold in order to insert the boost tap itself. Now there are some brands like ECS that does come with its own puncture. Uh, guys, it is really not needed if you you can find different alternatives to do it. Um, basically, I reached out to the owner of Precision Raceworks, um, Robert, and he suggested just using a socket as a guide and then use something like a nail, heat it up with a torch just to kind of um, ba basically break through the intake manifold plastic and melt it without there being extra bits in there. So for me personally, what I'm going to do I noticed I have uh, my soldering iron, uh, I need to replace this tip anyway, so as I did find, it is a perfect fit just to go into, uh, this is a 7mm socket and this fits in nicely into the manifold uh, port to act as a guide and I'm just going to heat this up and when it gets hot enough I'm just going to push it through to make sure that it is punctured properly and then we can set in our boost tap in nicely. So this is the port. Uh, that you are going to need to puncture inside here to make sure your boost tap goes in. So here's where it is going to fit. So we got to puncture that. So like I mentioned, seven millimeter socket is a perfect guide. So I just put this here to make sure that um, 
you know, nothing gets melted for the inner diameter of the actual port. I have to move my filter out of the way just to get an easier access. To I did zip tie these all together just so it's out of the way and I won't be touching it when I'm uh, using the soldering iron to burn through. All right, so now the uh, soldering iron is hot enough. I'm gonna just place in my seven millimeter socket as a guide and let's give this a shot. Unfortunately, the tip of the soldering iron was not long enough, but it was enough to make uh, melt a little bit of uh, indent into the plastic. And I will continue to use the seven millimeter socket as uh, a guide for this as well. And I am going to start the engine, let it run for a little bit in order to get this nice and hot. And then I'm going to use this as a guide and use a hammer to basically hit that in. Uh, and the plastic should be nice and soft in, other, in order for us to puncture it. Okay, so I let it idle for about 10-15 minutes and it reached up to 85 degrees Celsius. So this is pretty decently warm to the touch. Okay, that's all the way in. I have to kind of pry this out a little bit. It's a little bit stuck because it was a screw. If you can, I'd prefer you get a nail. Okay, there you go, came right out. Like I said, guys, make sure that you find a screw or a nail where the head does get stopped by the stocket like this, uh, or else you might have a little bit of an issue taking it back out. Just make sure, guys, if it's punctured through, just use a flashlight and verify that the hole is all the way through. All right, success. Now with our hole uh, properly punctured, we can just insert the boost tap in and put on the locking clip. Now I already put on the nipples on and uh, I left the port here open for the five bar map sensor. So we're just gonna put this right in. Okay, and all the way in it goes. And finally we do put the locking clip in. Let's give that a light tap. All right, there we go, it is on. Okay, now I'm just gonna put the AEM five bar sensor on. I did put some Teflon tape on the end before I screw this in. I mean, always after, just make sure that there are no leaks when you do start your system back up. Make sure we tighten this up a little bit. All right guys, so now that we have the five bar sensor now secured onto here, now we just plug in the wiring loom here. So this will just connect on this end. Okay, and then this side here is going to uh, go right in between this. So it's gonna intercept the signal and then give the sensor over here to make a connection here. Take that one out. Okay, we're gonna plug this in over here. Okay, now that's it. Just make sure you secure this in here as well. Okay, clip. Push down the locking clip here and uh, you're good to go. The last step to this install is we're gonna have to jack up the car and um, replace that map sensor on the charge pipe. Now, every time you lift your car, guys, obviously make sure it is safe to lift up both sides there. So I just put a, a wheel underneath. Last thing you wanna be is underneath the car and the jack slips or fails and you're underneath. All right, so we're here under the car and you'll have to remove the splash shield. Uh, you got one screw here in the middle um, if your OEM, for OEM screws, I believe it's like a T25. So you got one, you got in here, in the sides here, one, two, three, and other side, you got one there, one here, and I believe that might be it actually. 
So there's one back here. But you just basically have to loosen the front part to drop the uh, shield. And then uh, you can pull it off and access the charge pipe. You can also, if you still can't reach it when you try to bend the shield, there are a few more back here. Um, three big ones actually. So there's one here. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's a T40 if you have the OEM ones. So there's one, two, three. And then the whole um, uh, belly pan comes off. Now guys, I know I was talking about um, my coolant leak issues and upon being under the car, as you can see, there is a lot of coolant residue. So, you know, when I pull this belly pan off, I'm probably going to have to get a better look and see what's going on under here. Alright, enough about my coolant woes. That's not what this video is for. I'm going to show you where the sensor is. So, right from the front of the car, after you take out the shield, you're going to look at your passenger side um, intercooler pipe, an aftermarket one. And if you just move this coolant hose a little bit, so I can get a better view, you should have the sensor right here. So I'm going to take that off and we'll put that put that new piece on. Yeah, so a lot of people struggle to get this one unclipped from the throttle pipe. So it is pretty easy. So you see the wire loom right here. So what you want to do, you want to go on the opposite end from this side. Use a small flat head and uh, go where the opening where the clip is right here. And just kind of push it in and pull it upwards. And you can basically just pry the thing right open so bear with me no, it's not the best view but let's see what we can do here okay so pry that up okay so that should be pried enough and then you should be able to pull that right out there you go all right so we're gonna take off this sensor now with um, it's held in there with uh, some allen Allen key uh, screws and uh, once we take that out I'll show you the difference and uh, we'll put on the new one alright so sensors out this is the old one part number is 1904-11T123621B one one so this is just for the OEM 3 bar map sensor now we're putting the 4 bar which the part number is one seven one zero zero seven T one five five seven three two C. Um yeah, this all basically uh this is a four bar which will allow us to read more boost as opposed to this. So we're gonna put this on, uh, just secure it with the the Allen bolts and we just plug it back in and put the splash shield back and we're good to go. Alright guys, so I didn't record the ending to that video, it's just you know, throwing the sensor back on, putting the uh, under tray back on. But hope that was helpful for you guys. And my next video, we're going to start installing the second part of that Precision Raceworks kit. So stay tuned for that, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.